Hey folks, so I had a friend in high school who would tell these very exaggerated stories, these grand stories about his life, right, about his past before meeting us. And at first I thought, you know, I believed him, I took, his, I took him at face value, because why not, I liked him, we were friends, you know. Uh, but as time goes, went on, I started to realize, well, he's making this stuff up. Or if not making it up, he's exaggerating. He's using his life as a starting point in these stories, right? Things that happened, events, and kind of fabricating these, these grand narratives from this. So, kind of stopped believing what he said, right? And every once in a while, I hang out with him and talk about his life. And, and the stories that he tells me versus where he's at right now are very, very separate, very different. I'm sure that we all know people like that. Right, when I talk about this with other people, um, everybody has a friend, somebody they know that just likes to tell stories, right? And maybe even they believe the stories they tell. Now, I think this is just something that, that we do, that humans do, and perhaps some people do it more than others. You can see this very clearly with family, family drama, or some event happens, and everyone has a perspective, everyone has a side. And a lot of times, being family, you're stuck on one side, whether you want to or not. It's a parent, a sibling, someone you feel close to who has this very strong idea of what happened, right? Of who's in the right, who's in the wrong. And of course, you know, if there's a clear division on the other side, you have the other, right, family, other people who have the same idea, very strong belief in who's right and who's wrong. And you'd ask, well, what happened? And you'd get different stories. And even someone who had no stake in it, someone who was a third party who doesn't feel that they should side with anyone, has their perspective, right? They're no more objective than either side. They just think, well, this is what I saw, and I'm trying to stay out of it, right? That's, that's still a side. So there really is no truth of what happened, no truth of the event. And you can ask, well, didn't something happen? And wouldn't that thing that happened be the truth of it? Well, you could say either A, that nothing happened outside of perspective, that it all happened within these various perspectives, or that if something did happen outside of perspective, because there is no perspective, there is no meaning to it, right? The only way that it means anything to anyone is that there is a perspective attached to it, and with that comes meaning. So then it becomes pointless to talk about the objective truth of an event. Another thing that I think, and this is where I want to go off, is that we are constantly creating ourselves. And we do that through our actions, the things we do, the things we say, our, no, our idea of our legacy, jobs, relationships. And so we all have somebody who we're trying to create ourselves, who we're trying to be, create ourselves into. And part of the way we do this is through the way we talk to other people, right? The stories that we tell them, the way that we present ourselves. And so it's natural to, to speak in half-truths because the meaning that we attribute to the events, right? We utilize these things and our self-creation. And I think there's a spectrum of people who don't do this very much and people who do this a lot. Going back to family, if you ever, if you're, I'm sure this happens where, you know, a parent or someone will be telling a story about you as a, a child, a teenager, and you remember this, you remember this very clearly, and you think, that didn't quite happen like that. But they remember it very solidly. This is what happened. You can contest it, but are they lying? Or are you lying? And of course, right, you're people that make up these grand stories about the epic shit that they did just years before they met you, and, you know, and there's this disconnect. So what does this mean? This is a question that I think is always worth asking. Does it mean that people are just full of shit and you shouldn't believe them? Well, I think what it means is that there's a certain truth to the fabrications. There's a certain truth to the, the stories, the outright lies. And that truth is, here's this person, here's who they want to create themselves as. Here's who they are, here's who they want to be, here's the things that they do. They are a person that tells stories. 
So I don't want to dismiss truth outright, but look at the notion of what does it mean to us, and should it mean that to us? And in some cases I think, well, no. No, I think perhaps you can have a type of relationship with these people. You can see some sort of truth in what they say. You can trust a type of truth coming out with, while knowing that they're making stuff up, grossly exaggerating. People generally speak in half-truths. This is what I believe. The extent of that, I think, maybe we'll know, you know, maybe you can know, maybe you cannot know, maybe you'll never know. But nonetheless, I don't think that dismissing exaggerations or wild stories outright is necessary for finding some sort of truth in someone. So what does this mean to us? Because certainly we're not people who make shit up. Then maybe look at how we're trying to create ourselves, right? The stories that we tell, the perspectives that we take and understand them as stories, as perspectives. Understand them as not necessarily relating to the truth of an event. And it's an interesting, let's say, challenge to think about how we talk about ourselves, how we engage in conversation with other people, and whether we are capable of contributing to that conversation without creating ourselves. Can we go without talking about ourselves? Give us some thought, and I'll talk to you later.